Play. This is the chords of Jeff Beck, and I definitely want to admit this in the beginning of this episode. This was a really hard episode for me to put together because I'm pretty sure everybody watching this, just like myself, was completely caught off guard about the recent news of Jeff Beck passing away. And I was actually driving around in my car listening to NPR, absorbing that day's news, and at the end of a segment, they just kind of threw it in there. You know, Jeff Beck had passed away. Brief history, there was some music playing, and they went to a commercial. I almost drove off the road, you know, I was like, wait a minute, they just say Jeff Beck died? And, you know, it definitely hit me really, really strange. And it was similar to how I felt after Eddie Van Halen passed away, you know, back in 2020. But like I said, I was blindsided. I was, you know, up to my neck in Japanese scales and Koto picking techniques when the news, you know, hit my ears. And it took me a little time to kind of put this together, but... I wanted to put this together mainly because I've had a lot of requests and messages, you know, asking, are you going to pay tribute to Jeff? And I really thought about it, and I thought about, you know, hitting licks and lead guitar, but we've already did that, you know, with the soloing secrets, and there's also a three-for-all for Jeff, but we really haven't looked at his chord work, and I actually had this, like, on the back burner, at least the idea, and I thought, you know what, nobody's talking about Jeff Beck's chords, and they should, because that's kind of the, uh, like the sonic foundation of all the things he would do, you know, as far as licks and lead guitar and guitar solos. This episode's going to be a little bit different than most, but, uh, you know, without question, Jeff Beck's a legendary guitarist, my favorite guitarist on the planet, and uh, I just, I really can't believe he's gone. So anyway, I hope I can put together a tribute for him that's fitting, and this episode's going to be pretty emotional, but here we go. So we did discuss a lot of the techniques and playing habits and secrets in Jeff Beck's, you know, musical world in the Soloing Secrets episode I put together, which that was about eight or nine months ago now. But you're going to notice me using a pick in this episode, and some of you out there might shout at the screen, Jeff Beck didn't use picks. Yes, that's true. He didn't use picks starting somewhere in the mid-80s. But don't forget, in the 60s and 70s, all the way up until about the mid-80s, he did use a pick. And it wasn't until around the Flash album, that's when he started to shy away from picks and start to investigate, you know, the fingerstyle technique. But the early years, which a lot of the examples in this episode, you know, are from those early years, they did feature a pick. So I'm sure a lot of you watching this, you know, have been scouring the internet looking for, you know, interviews and concert footage and just, you know, these candid videos with Jeff, you know, playing guitar. And I did find this really interesting video. I think it was actually posted, you know, from somebody in Japan because it had a lot of Japanese, you know, uh, writing. But uh, it was actually going through his guitar collection. And I'd never seen that before. It looked like it was actually in his home, like somebody camcordering, you know. And he's walking through and pulling out guitars and stuff. And I was just blown away. It was like 14 or 15 minutes long. But it definitely made my gears start spinning like, yeah, all those historic guitars. And I'd never really thought about that. But his stash and his guitar collection is so historic and impressive. So the music and examples in this episode actually were pulled from five different Jeff Beck albums. And, you know, we're basically hitting chords. You know, this is chord play. And that's one area of Jeff's, you know, playing that's really interesting. Is he's almost like B.B. King in this respect. Is he really didn't play chords that much. I mean, he did. But he was definitely more a melodic soloist, you know, fills and melodic, you know, interludes and stuff like that, obviously guitar solos and stuff. And occasionally he would play chords, but he was more of an implied chord master. Like the bass and the keyboards would actually be, you know, forming the chord. And Jeff might just play like a little dyad or a triad or a little piece of the chord. 
and he rarely ever played like giant bar chords. I mean, rarely. But uh, you're going to notice that as we kind of move through this episode, there's all these little sneaky chord moments, you know, hiding in this music, which is so cool. With the opening, that's the song Scatterbrain from Blow by Blow, arguably Jeff Beck's most frantic and crazy composition. There's a lot going on. So we're just going to basically walk through this. I'm not trying to impress anybody out there. I'm trying to pay tribute to my favorite guitarist. But there's a lot going on. So first of all, let's look at what's going on behind that frantic, crazy legato workout. There's a series of implied chords. It starts with B flat. <laughs> there. D. And then finally G. And then you hear this descending, kind of diminished implied, you know, it's G sharp. And you're going to move down to F, down to D, down to B. That's like a minor thirds right there. crazy frantic legato. So let's break that down. Now the free, the crazy legato, um, you know, you're basically starting this in B flat in the background, but you're doing this. And that's one pattern or one cycle right there, a repeat. And you want to repeat that, do it again. Especially for your pinky. My pinky definitely is feeling that today. That's all over B flat. Then you hear it change to B, but you want to just stay on the same one right there. And when it goes to C, you're going to move that up one fret. So start on the ninth fret. step and you're going to start on the 11th fret. And then when it moves to uh, that uh, G, you're going to move way up here. A slightly different pattern because you know we had this uh, index middle and pinky all the way up and then when we get there you're doing this index third and pinky. descending kind of diminished implied thing with chords and it sounds like crazy car horns and stuff super ugly that's like b flat over uh well like b flat over a flat and then a g over f and then an e over d and then you're moving down it's basically a d flat over b really weird. And you're basically playing, you know, like the uh, the flat seven uh, is like the root of those chords right there. Um, that's really weird. And you go right back to that frantic legato. So all together, it's something like this, and it's crazy. Next up is Let Me Love You from the album Truth, and this had Rod Stewart on vocals. Great song, like this. sharp and you got this uh, kind of swaggery riff like that. And keep in mind 
mind this is 1968, so that's early on, and that's really aggressive and funky. <laughs> that F sharp and then you're basically playing part of F sharp 7 right there. So you're hitting this F sharp 7 and then you distinctly hear this kind of pull off, you know, this like partial B to partial A in the background right there. The first time it's fast and the second time it's a little slower. to B or B7 and then you're also hearing like this B7 sus4 right there back to F sharp 7 and then right there lo and behold C sharp uh, 7 sharp 9 the Hendrix chord kind of move into that B7 back to F sharp C sharp 7 right there. Next up is the song Plinth from Beccaola. And once again, you have to think of the time frame. This is late 60s, so Deep Purple hadn't even recorded Smoke on the Water yet. But check this out. So very reminiscent of Smoke on the Water. It's just missing that flat five moment. Right? Um, but right there, we're basically playing around a G. So it's partial G, partial B flat to partial C, and you kind of hear that you know bass and the guitar kind of hitting that G root note. And then it walks back down the second time, C, B flat to G. So it's very simple, but you have to think of how influential that riff actually was. guessing maybe Richie Blackmore might have been a big you know Jeff Beck fan and kind of cop that riff and then the next thing you know he wrote Smoke on the Water. I could be wrong but that totally reminds me of Smoke on the Water right there. Next up is the very famous Blue Wind from the album Wired and this is very strange and unusual but something like this. <laughs> Jeff's bending this G flat five into G five like that. He's kind of playing with that, you know, like I said, G flat five and just a regular G five power chord. But he's doing it with a bend. And I distinctly can hear a release of that bend because I've seen this notated with just a G power chord, you know, as far as the beginning. But I think he's actually bending that first chord that. So you're going to fret this G and then I'm actually sneaking my middle and third finger there on the A string and I'm bending that C sharp up to D. Or I guess you could think of that as a D flat if you want to think of that as the flat five. And you're literally... So the bending of that chord is really weird because you're bending this D flat up to D and forming a G power chord with a bend. So that's really strange. Like that. And you're going to have to kind of play that bend to make sure it's in tune like that. You'll find where it's in tune and he's really just kind of smearing that note. You know, something like that. It's really distinct and kind of odd. finger and that's really hard because you don't want to bend both strings you just want to bend only the A and that's hard and the last time you're doing uh, this you're basically kind of doing this 
little pull off into a chord right there. So you're doing the C sharp B to the open A, and then you're grabbing that. And you can think of that a couple different ways. Uh, how about an F sharp minor 11 over C sharp right there? distinct and interesting guitar part. Next up is you know what I mean, the opening track from Blow by Blow, and this is super funky, like this. So it basically starts with this. And think of this in the key of D. So it's like a D13 to an implied D9. And you're just barring the fifth fret, but you're adding that um, B note right there. Right? And then you're hearing. So you could think of that as a partial uh, D7 sharp 9, the Hendrix chord, to a partial D9, like a D9 over F sharp right there. But it's just three notes. You know, but three notes on three strings, like that. So you're kind of doing that to that, but you're just doing it like this. So there's that uh, D13 to imply D9, and then do the first part again, and then you got this, and that's like a partial C sharp seven to a partial D seven, but you're just playing two strings or two notes. You know, little dyads right there, like this. And then Jeff starts doing those really cool slides in there too, once that gets going. The slip and slide octave, and it's kind of like a pinch harmonic, slightly. You know, something like that. You know, so tasty and so cool, and I love that funky stuff. Next up is the song Play With Me from the album Wired, and once again, this is super funky, like this. <laughs> Something like that. So it starts with this really funky riff, and we're smearing this B flat and then walking up B, C to that E flat. And keep in mind there's a lot of rhythm guitar, the bass, there's an organ, obviously the drums, and also a lead guitar. And they're just rocking and funking out right there. And then this little partial F5, the E flat 5 right there. Just think of those, you know, power chords, but just the top part. And then and kind of busy but that's E flat F E flat C B flat and then that lower F it's a busy little riff and then you do it again Something like that. So that's basically, uh, or at least what I'm hearing right there, I'm hearing this, and then I'm hearing like that. So there's, you know, kind of a root note that's changing. I think the bass and organ are hitting that D and that G. I think Jeff's really just playing that. You know, and that's basically the top part of a D minor 9 right there. But just, you know, like a D9 or D minor 9 over F. So you hear Jeff and he's just playing this. That'd be like an implied, what, G6 sus4? Or G6, you know, uh, 11, I guess. And, you know, definitely the bass and the organ are who are supplying those root notes right there. So that D, D minor 9, and then that G6 sus4, I guess. And you kind of hear that 
back and forth, but once again, Jeff's just doing that, like kind of, you know, funky scratching. <laughs> keeps going but that's a really interesting song and I love the contrast from that super funky riff to that kind of lighter jazzy part really cool last but not least is people get ready from the album flash and this is an old Curtis Mayfield song and Jeff Beck and Rod Stewart covered it and uh, it's a beautiful tune and this is the intro part something like this <laughs> just kind of making it sound like a cathedral or something. But we're starting like this, and I'm actually finger-picking everything. I believe Jeff is, too. But we're starting with this D major and kind of playing with the sus4, that, uh, D, or that G note. Like that. And then you distinctly hear this. Right? So that's like a D over F sharp, and then you're reaching back and grabbing that C sharp. So that's kind of like an implied D major 7, just for a second. This uh, part of a G right here, and then right there, it's like a little piece of D over A to D, and I prefer to play that right there because I have seen transcriptions where it's back here, but this sounds closer to what Jeff did, and then go back to that uh, D major and that sus four, and then that D over F sharp, and then a little piece of G over A. Five, right there. So all the way through it. That's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with the chords of Jeff Beck. And like I mentioned at the beginning, uh, this was really hard for me to put together because not only am I thinking about Jeff and, you know, emotional and everything, but then revisiting his music and kind of reworking, you know, some of these riffs and chord parts and everything. Um, it was therapeutic, but it was also really hard because it made me sad. And I was sitting there listening to his music and finding photos and reading interviews and finding videos you know, and stuff, you know, where he was going through his guitar collection and stuff, stuff like that. And it was really hard, you know, where I was just like facing the issue at hand, which is Jeff Beck's passing. And unlike Van Halen, which when Van Halen passed away, I was devastated all over again. But I kind of just went in my shell. And I wasn't looking at photos of Van Halen. And I wasn't listening to his music. I just kind of avoided, you know, what had happened. But with Jeff, I thought, you know what? Let's try this a different way. Let me tackle Jeff's music. Let me think about Jeff and listen to him. Instead of hiding from what happened, I just dove into what happened. And I think that actually helped me, because I feel better about this than I did when Van Halen passed. And there's so many that have passed away in recent years, especially during the pandemic period. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, it's one after another. So it's really sad. But I think the best way to remember a musician or an artist is to notice their work and maybe learn from it or learn some of it and perform it. I and mean, that's the best way to pay tribute to an artist. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you. And rest in peace, Jeff Beck.